So working with this in Photoshop to slice the image up to get the mouth separated from the rest of it, it's there, like every other thing in Photoshop, there's generally six ways to do the same end result. And you just figure out what flavor of the month you're interested in or what technique makes you most happy while you're doing it. And you just you roll with it. Uh, for this one, what I'm going to do is I, I need to have two copies of this when I'm done. I need to have the chin and I need to have the face with the chin cut out to create that animation. So the first thing that I would recommend that you do is you take this background layer and you make a copy of it. So with the background copy, this is the one that I want to work on. Now, we can turn off the original background. It's not a bad idea to always keep an extra, the original layer as a copy, just because then you have something to fall back to if you screw things up along the way, because it happens. Now. I'm going to use the lasso tool and do a rough selection of the mouth area. So I'm going to choose the part that I want to animate, which will be the mouth and chin, and I am just drawing. Now the best way to do this is to actually make your selection bigger than what you need. Now I don't like that selection that I just did so I'm going to undo it and redo it again because if you make your selection bigger then you can we're going to copy paste in this chin so it shows up on a new layer and then you can trim the edges of it a little bit to get a little cleaner form so I don't like that selection so I'll go under select choose deselect and try again so I'm going to make it a much bigger rougher selection just choosing around the mouth area and then edit copy, edit paste, and that puts a copy of the chin on its own layer. If you name your layers in Photoshop, when you import the artwork into Flash, it will remember those names. So I would encourage you to do that now. So I double click on the layer name, and then I can type in the name. Actually, I'm going to call it mouth. So now it's labeled mouth. If I turn off the face layer, I can see that the mouth layer is sitting there. And what I want to do is clean up my selection. And I'm going to use the eraser tool. If I zoom in a little bit, it's a little easier to see what's going on. And use the eraser tool and just erase so that I have only the bottom lip and jaw as part of this. And this is the part that it just takes a little bit of time to do, but we're just trying to get close. Took off a little too much. And now if I switch to the move tool, I see that you know I have a shape that I will be able to move. Now as this moves like this, what's ha going to not work out so well is that we can see the existing lip behind. So what we have to do is do a little bit of manual painting to create the illusion that now we're looking into an open mouth. So as this moves, now I need to create that illusion that I'm looking in an open mouth. So I need to put it back to where it was. Now this is where it's important that you pay attention to which layer is active. So I need to go to the face layer and I'm going to name it now as well. So I have a face layer and a mouth layer and my original background layer. On the face layer we're going to do some painting to create the illusion that the mouth is open. So if I just use a paintbrush, if I use any type of kind of dark color that exists in the image, 
then it comes out a little bit richer. I could go and paint with black. That's not going to really blend in with the rest of the picture that, especially in the face, doesn't really have any black in it anyway. So that's not a good choice. What I might want to do is use the eyedropper and go find a dark color that can represent inside the mouth. Now if I grab the paintbrush and just very carefully do some painting here and it's important to pay attention that I am on the face layer not on the mouth layer And how far down you go depends on how dramatic you want to make the mouth opening occur. So now that I've painted this, and I could go in and I could paint the back of the throat, I could make it look like you're staring down my throat while it's open, you know, all kinds of good things. Or I can just leave it dark. But now we see if I move this chin, it starts to create the illusion that I have no teeth but I could be talking. Now I can also see that on the left side of the face as we view it, that I think I need to extend my artwork over a little bit more to create a little better illusion of the mouth opening. So I am going to continue my painting a little bit more on this and just extend that over just so it feels a little bit more balanced. And make sure you have a little bit of fun with this, especially when you get to beat on your instructor's face. I mean, there's uh, students have indicated that it's a very therapeutic, enjoyable experience when they get to uh, have a little bit of fun with their instructor's face. So we can see that it now creates the illusion of a movable mouth. So after you have completed that. If you've added in any other fanciness to my face or done other things, that's fine too. I mean, you, you can have fun with it. Make sure you have the face layer labeled face, the mouth layer labeled mouth, and then go ahead and save this as a PSD file or Photoshop file. I'm just going to call mine face, PSD, hit save, and now we've completed the Photoshop portion of the process. The next step is going to be to create a flash file and bring this into it.